What's up guys? It's me, Raza Munchausen. And it's been a while since I've done one of these, but welcome to another King of Fighters 14 theory. Now, uh, I'm not going to do what I usually do, where I, you know, shrink my screen and have images that I scroll through in the background for my theories. This one, I'm actually going to sit down and just kind of like talk to you guys, like face to face, about what I think. <coughs> So as you guys know, the King of Fighters 14 has been out since August. It revealed a whole lot of different things. Um, different characters that will be brought back, what, what the story is going to entail of for the future of the saga. Just so many different things. And the game confirmed some of my past theories. Like there would be characters that will be coming back to life. Um, ties that certain characters have with each other, and so on. So, King of Fighters 14 did exceptionally well, they're still updating the game, and I'm happy to see how far it's come, and that people love playing it genuinely. So, this video is also going to be a discussion about what you might see in King of Fighters 15 as well. Now, as you guys know, my last theory, it was about Ash and Saki being responsible for the start of this for the start of this new saga, but also the continuation of the uh, series. And um, they are. They are responsible for this because of their actions. Versus they would have come into being. But also with first coming into being, there are other people who came in who came in from other worlds, other universes, and so on, and people are being revived. And this all goes back to the actions of these two characters, Ash, Crimson, and his ancestor, Saki. So it's kind of funny to think about it, that, you know, he sacrificed his life to, you know, end this all. But instead, end up, end up doing, end up bringing in a whole new powerful foe. And continue, continuing it. So it's kind, of, it's kind of weird and interesting to think about. But now let's look at what we see. First is a character who the Jin Scrolls that the Jin Brothers from Fiddle Fury had mentions as what he says that the scrolls mentioned verse, but it didn't seem as powerful. So they took some bit of Fiddle Fury and add to this game when it came to Verse's origins. But also say he came from hate and was able to come together thanks to Ash and Saki. In fact, his powers, it states, came from Ash, Cruz, and, and Saki, and that some of it was given to Shanae, Shanae, as an infant, which means Shanae also has some of their powers. Interesting. <laughs> that these two eventually have given Shanae the abilities that caused his parents to abandon him as a baby. Ash Crimson is still a douchebag even in death. <laughs> Jesus. But, um. So we're, we're, introduced, we're introduced to Verse, a creature of anger and hatred, who keeps us. who um, is made up of the spirits of multiple individuals, including past KOF bosses and KOF characters that have made appearances. Now I remember earlier on in my theories, I mentioned that Ignis would be back. KOF 14 confirmed that due to the fact that Ignis' spirit was contained within Verse, and he activates in his win scene with who? Sylvie. So SNK is confirming that there is definitely something between Sylvie and Ignis. Because he could have activated within anyone else, Maxima, Kadash, Keo. He could have acti activated with any of them and took over, but instead it was Sylvie, which is interesting. Now, I also theorized that Chrysalid may, may have been alive or dead. I say he was most likely alive due to the fact that his fate was unknown, but KOF 14 did confirm that he was in fact dead, as he took over verse in a Kadash fight, and if he won, you know, he talked to Kadash. Ash Crimson, 
is also confirmed to be alive, as is seen in the official invitation team ending. But also took over verse to speak to Iori. So there's many different things going on here, and many different characters circling back. Gaidel, uh, the father of Leona, who we've never seen, is also going to make an appearance, and he's a member of the Orochi, of the Hakushu, the Orochi clan, and he has control over water. So that's going to be cool. We're going to see our first water user, possibly in either KO 15 or 16. <laughs> And like I said, Rugal will be back. He is coming back. And so many other characters, like I can't wait. Jeff Bogart possibly is going to make a return as well. So, there's a whole lot going on. Now, interesting thing that Kill 14 has showed us, especially with the um, South American team ending, is that Ness seems to have been. Ness seems to have brought itself back. But how, how do we know that was Ness Wolf 1? Let's look at Nelson. He has a mechanical arm. He said that he stated that he lost his arm in an accident. Maximo, upon seeing him, recognize, recognizes the arm from somewhere uh, somewhere familiar. And he asks him where to get it, and Nelson refuses to answer him. <clears throat> now, as has been stated, within the KOF series, other syndicates, other organizations have been trying to get a hold of Ness's technology, but never could, because it was seemingly destroyed. But um, let's look at Ness's history from the Ness Saga. Ness has been known to cause accidents, so-called accidents, that, you know, cause them to take someone in and clone them, or, you know... Manipulate them, hypnotize them to join their side, or any sort or any sort of deal. And they also love examining the power of other fighters. That is one thing. Those from the past didn't care about examining the powers of other people. They just wanted to bring Rochi back so Saki could take its power. Ness is are the only villains as a whole in a series who did things to examine the power of others. And in the South American team. This unknown group used Nelson to examine the powers of the fighters, but also Verse, a being that they somehow seem to know of prior to these events. Which is very interesting, actually, because that gives you a whole, whole other thinking process of that. Does that mean that Ignis and Ness knew about Verse long before KO 14 came into being? So that is a whole lot of information to take take in. <clears throat> so does that mean that you know Ignis already knew about Verse, which is why he wanted to become a which is why he wanted to become a god so he could take Verse's power as well. I mean it's very interesting to think about. <clears throat> and then you have um as the Ikari team ending states how do I put this? No, not the Akari team. The Kadash team ending actually states that, you know, 36 people have been resurrected. And a whole lot of them have... Well, actually, the Akari team ending states 36 people have been resurrected. And then... Kadash, the Kadash ending also says this. So the Kadash ending states that, you know, there, a whole lot of them are people who had... Plenty of them were people who had experience with past competitions. Well, let's look at all the bosses who possibly died within the KOF franchise. You had Rugal, you had Yashiro, Chris and Shermi. Shermi, that's a big maybe. Chris, we all know, is alive. As I stated a long time ago, and that KOF 14 seems to confirm, seeing as how he was nowhere to be nowhere to be found because Orochi didn't have his catalyst, and we all know that. Orochi was within Chris and still using his body when being sealed. So Chris escaped. So Yashiro, Gaianids, Clone Zero, Original Zero, Chrysalid, Ignis, Lukai, Magaki, Saki, 
Ash. Yeah, that's ten right there. If you, ten people who had a uh, bad connection to the past competitions. Um, who else? Fate. Alamira's dad. And so on. We actually really didn't have anything with the competition, but I'm just listening off. So yeah, that's at least 10 characters that I brought up right off the bat, and that I could remember. And if there are any more characters that died within the Kill-Off series, let me know, because I don't remember. Because I know for the Fatal Fury bosses, they're still alive for the most part, from what we're given. So, yeah. <clears throat> and then, there's also what the Kadash and the Clash team ending said as well. They said whether they're going, whether they're going to battle with Ness or Orochi, there's some powers going on here. Ness going to battle. Now, in my last theory, I did state that this like this, this saga is going to be a war amongst groups. And as I said, Ness seems to be back now. Orochi, freshly sealed, could probably break out at any minute. Those from the past seem to be wandering around as we can see from Kukri, who may or may not be a member, but looks like one. But again, I did say that Shion is probably the new head of those from the past, and therefore they will make a return, especially if Saki is very much alive. If Ash is alive, I'm pretty sure that Saki has returned somewhere as well. And then there's Burst. So we have really four factions, Orochi, Ness, those from the past, and Verse, who it hints will also return. Four factions right here, plus no the heroes who are going to have to try and get in to stop all of this. Now, Maximo also states that bodies that were presum presumably vanished have also turned up out of nowhere. And there's any bodies that we could. Well, a whole lot of bosses' bodies were never found. But I have to say, two of the most iconic ones who disappeared without a trace would be Mukai, mainly due to the fact that Saki completely drained him, and no one knows what happens to his bones. And Magaki. Let's not forget, Magaki's body vanished completely. Even after Hydern's, gr Hydern's group took it onto his airship. And which those from the past attacked and took it back. But they never went into detail about what went to his body, though. So, Maki definitely is back. Mukai, I'm telling you, is back. Saki is back. And just so many different characters. This is going to be a war. An all out war. And also, now that I think about it, we were given hints to a possible, you know, first ending angry spirit type deal. Years ago, 12 years ago, in fact, with Maximum Impact 1, actually. Because if y'all remember, well, if you ch if you choose to fight as Leona throughout the story mode, and you make that, f and you make it to the final boss, which is Duke, and the Showtime stage, which is extremely similar in looks and appearance to how uh, that underground fighting arena slash uh, opera house it places in uh, KO14. If you look at her ending, she says, I better I need to get out of here so these angry spirits can rest. Now if you look at if you look in that room, there are multiple, multiple and multiple people from different ages, from modern all the way to past. Cheering for Duke in this battle. And she refers to them as angry and restless spirits. Interesting. That no one else seemed to pick up on that, but her. In fact, spirit, spirit wise, it seems like within the series, Leona and Iori especially are the main two who can pick up on spiritual anomalies that should not be there. So you can you can say this is a coincidence, or just you know something they added in. I can't say. But it seems to be oddly specific to the, that the fact that, you know, only 
Leona notices that all these people in this arena were spirits who were not only angry, but extremely restless. In fact, no one knows where those spirits went after the, after the end of that battle. They just disappeared. They booed in anger and disappeared. Move on to Kale of Maximum Impact 2, where um, you're fighting the catacombs. What do you see flying, flying around? You see spirits, but smaller, not as large as the ones you see in KOF 14, and not as demonic. But you see some of them flying around inside the catacomb that you're battling in. So again, that's KOF giving us two hints at something spiritual, with just maximum impact as a whole. Not even Fatal Fury or KOF previously went into you know, the spiritual aspect that KOF 14 seems to, seems to have taken. And then I look back on what SNK did with um, KOF Maximum Impact. If you all remember Shaolin's character, who became lights pretty quickly, it was stated that, you know, Shaolin was made as SNK finally, sorry, finally willing to accept Maximum Impact into the main franchise. So that means that we may possibly see a crossover from that game into the next ones as well. So you might see, you might end up seeing Shao Wan. You might end up seeing Albumira. I mean, I didn't think about this back then when I said that they'll probably, they'll probably not make an appearance. And you might, you might even see Rock Howard because again, this is a like a separate universe, alternate world type of deal. And since Verse himself can alter these effects, these characters can very much make an appearance. And if all these bodies are turning up, I'd say one of them might be Fate, who grew up in Southtown doing, who grew up in Southtown was fairly old from what I'm guessing, and around the age of Jeff Bogard, who seems to also be making an appearance. So we're probably we're getting old Southtown heroes in the mix as well. So Fate, Jeff Bogard, and there's no telling who else. So, KOF 14 is really like just putting everything together. It's getting everything from every uh, main franchise within the, every main game, every prequel game, even possibly the spin offs as well that they have, and putting it into this new saga for an all out battle. And I can't wait, honestly. There is so much that's going to happen. So, how do I think this is going to turn out? Well, next game we are probably going to see Ash Crimson, and along with Ash Crimson, we're going to see members of um, those from the past turn up. And then after that, we're also going to see members. We're going to see Ignis with the Nest crew pop up again. Ignis taking over right away. Then we're going to see past Orochi members also turn up. And continue. So this is going to be an all-out war, and we may end up getting an alliance with Shune, Ash, and possibly Kinsu, or you know, Team China will, will remain the way it is. I mean, there's so many possibilities, honestly. I mean, chances are we actually may see dual Lawn. Um, Duel on Oswald and Shin, Shin Wu back. We may see we may see them back. Ash may contact some of them and go on. We don't know. We we may also see Ron again. Actually, now that I think about it, because Ron was even hinted at whatsoever in KOF 14. Ron may ac actually pop up again at some point within the saga. So the possibilities are endless. I really don't know how to put it, but um, there's a lot that's going to happen within this. And um, I want to know what you guys think. It, like I said, this one's more of a discussion slash um, with some theories, just to, just to try and guess what we might end up getting into later on the uh, saga. But yeah, I believe this is going to be an all-out war with plenty of characters returning, with new characters added in. And it's just going to go on from there. So what do you guys think? 
And what do you guys think that SNK is going to do? Let me know down in the comments below. And I love you all. Take care. And have a oh wait, hang on a second. I just I also remember something that um was was shown and the official team in official team the official invitation team first cutscene that again seems to be done with Ness. Why is everything dealing with Ness? The Ash Saga is still mentions mentioning Ness, like he's still like Ignis' is still over the place. I think Halo 14 is going into it as well. I mean, N Ness seems to be having more mentions than the Oroch than Orochi does. <laughs> How powerful is Ness? But um, upon seeing Verse, you know, Kukri's like everything is going to plan. Something is inside that. So, which he's probably referring to Ash. But then, my Mians or Mayans dialogue towards Sylvia is like, you know, the conflict didn't say anything about what happened after the tournament. Is this Ness doing? And Sylvia's response kind of gets to me and gets you thinking, honestly. She's like, no, no, absolutely not. Ness has nothing to do with this. And after saying all that, she says, probably. Now, you would think that Sylvie basically watched as Ness was destroyed. She knew that she knew that Ness was destroyed. But I think that she just gave us a hint stating that Ness was still around. Like why, why would she say probably? Probably, knowing that Ness was gone completely. She decides to add that little tidbit line. SK decides to add that little line that says probably. That's really specific. I mean, again, I mean, you see Orochi, but yet Orochi's just blown, blown off like easily. But we know it's gonna be back. But here it is again. The main threat seems to be going back to Ness. So that is real. It's really interesting to think about it that way. So it seems like my theories on Ness having a big hand in these future events. Just may be true. I don't know, you guys let me know what you think. But again, this is just something to kind of get back into the motion. I'll do, I'm gonna be doing more late, much later on. And I'm gonna try and get back into uh, the mode that I, I was, that I was in before. But anyway, guys, I love you all. Have a great night or great morning, depending on what country you're in. And I will talk to you guys, well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Just real quick, before I forget, um, next Tuesday, probably if I don't have to work, I actually do. I actually want to do a little Skype, um, Skype theory as well. As in, one of you guys can, um, if any of you guys want to participate in the next King of Fighters 14 theory, um, DM me on Twitter, your Skype, or message me on YouTube your um, your um, Skype username and I will add you and then Tuesday if you are interested we can do a theory together on what we might see or what events might occur so that's something I want to do if you're interested just let me know but um yeah love you all have a great night peace